Well, here's an encouraging word if you still haven't done your taxes. Leavenworth. Today, we, this past week, we've been reading the Gospel of St. Luke, which is called the Gospel of Mercy. And we saw yesterday that Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners. Tax collectors were the most despised in the Lord's day. And yet, it says the Lord ate with them. And it says tax collectors and sinners were drawing near to listen to Jesus. He was a magnet. And yet the scribes and the Pharisees complained about this. So this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And again, remember why Jesus did this was not to confirm them in their sins or their sinful lifestyle, but he did this to call them to conversion, to call them to repent and to leave a life of sin and to follow the commandments and to follow God. And the Lord, we heard yesterday, gave those two parables, the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. Again, showing how valuable each sheep is, how valuable each coin is. The sheep and the coin do not lose their value just because they're lost. And the good shepherd goes out in search of the lost sheep. The Lord even says, what man among you would leave the 99 and go after the one? Of course, none of them would because it doesn't make sense. That would be crazy to leave the 99 in the desert and to go out after the lost sheep. But it's referring to how God's love is beyond our imagination. We often hear that God loves us. A beautiful thought is that God is in love with us. And as St. Catherine of Siena says, God is crazy in love with us, that he's willing to go out after us as the lost sheep and put us on his shoulders and bring us back to the home. And what a beautiful thought that is, that God loves us so much. He is crazy in love with us. And again, that parable of the lost coin of the woman who searches diligently and then afterwards has a great party with her friends that she has found her lost coin. And again, showing how valuable each soul is. And we think of Jesus says there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents and over 99 self-righteous people who have no need, they think, of repentance. And more joy in heaven among the angels when a sinner returns to God. So that's, we've been reading this week of the beautiful parables of St. Luke and the gospel of mercy. And of course, we think of, we pray to St. Anthony for all lost souls, for those who have fallen away from the church, drifted away. We pray for his intercession, as well as we think of Frank Duff, whose feast day was yesterday, November 7th, the day he died, the founder of the Legion of Mary. He also was a great shepherd, even though he was a layman, he went out after the lost sheep. The first work of the Legion Mary was the red light district. And they spent five years visiting every week. And pretty soon they were able to close down that entire red light district and return the women to their families and to the home, to their homes and to the church because they went out after the lost sheep. So we think of the beautiful uh, gospel of Luke and those passages of God's love and mercy for those who are lost. And again, one last thought in today's Gospel of St. Luke, we have the steward who is going to be um, um, fired because he was not a good steward. So he goes and he reduces everybody's bill, maybe taking it off his own commission. And it says the master, it says commended <clears throat> the student, the steward, not because of dishonesty, but because of his prudence. And prudence is the queen of the virtues. It's see, seeing things from God's perspective. It's seeing the worldly things from the divine perspective. So we should pray every day for that grace of prudence and wisdom and knowledge and to practice this queen of all the virtues, the virtue of prudence.